My name is Brian Roberts. I'm an assistant professor at the London School of Economics here in the Department of Philosophy, Logic, and Scientific Method. And I work in the mathematics and the philosophical uh, foundations of modern physics. My work in the philosophy of physics has been about the foundations of quantum mechanics, which is a theory that we have that tells us about certain probabilistic phenomena in the world, mostly related to very tiny things. And one question I've been especially interested in is what quantum theory tells us about the nature of time. The concept of the era of time I'd like to talk about is really the concept of an asymmetry in time. Asymmetries in time are very pervasive experiences. You and I are aging in a way that is irreversible. We are headed towards the inevitable law of death and we never go back the other way. But there's lots of other asymmetries that happen. I know what I had for breakfast but I don't necessarily know what I'm going to have for dinner. Some people think there's a causal arrow of time that causes always precede their effects. Uh, you can talk about the arrow of time associated with the expanding universe, or you can talk about the arrow of time at the level of fundamental particles. There are some phenomena that can happen in one direction in time, but not in the other. One of the most important questions about the arrow of time is whether or not we have one. Certain phenomena just don't seem to have an arrow. You can imagine a rock that's just sitting there, not doing anything. It doesn't really appear directed in time because, well, just imagine I was taking a film of it. I reverse the film, I see the same rock that's just sitting there. And I can express that idea in a little bit more elaborate sense. So imagine a billiard ball now. It's coming in at the side of a wall of the billiard table and it bounces off at a certain angle. Cut the film. Now watch it in reverse. It's coming in at one angle and coming out the other. Uh, but if I only see that snapshot, I don't really know which direction it's going. I don't know whether the film has been reversed or not. So that's a phenomenon that isn't really asymmetric. So some people say the laws of billiard balls, in the absence of friction, are time reversal invariant. So that is, there is no uh, asymmetry associated with that motion. Other phenomena in the world have deep asymmetries associated with them. And it's a very important question when you have an asymmetry and when you don't. Quantum mechanics, in the ordinary, non-relativistic sense, it's invariant under time reversal, so it's just like the billiard balls. Uh, however, in relativistic quantum field theory, there are phenomena that are directed in time. They have their own little arrows. And understanding when these invariances occur and when they don't is a deep and open question in many aspects of modern physics, and part of understanding that question requires understanding the meaning and the nature of what we're calling arrows of time. There's an old question about time travel. And you might imagine, for example, that all you have to do is turn your arrow around to face the other direction and you'd be able to travel to the past. But that turns out to be impossible. According to relativity theory, you can't travel faster than the speed of light. And it would be required, if you were to turn your arrow around, that you actually travel faster than light. So for physical reasons, we can't do that. But there is another possibility that's been explored, and not just by philosophers, some very eminent physicists have asked this question too. Is there another way to travel to the past? And the answer turns out to be yes, there's a way, in principle, that's compatible with our best theory of space and time, which is general relativity. And that idea is that, well, instead of turning your arrow around, imagine that you were on a loop. Imagine the time we're moving forward, and then it passes around and comes back to the beginning again in a circle. That is called a closed time-like curve. And that's the sense of time travel that is in investigated in the philosophy of physics. The oldest philosophical problem about time travel is the grandfather paradox. And this is a problem which asks, is it even coherent to have time travel? Is it even meaningful? Uh, and the problem is, well, imagine you could travel back in time to any point and do whatever you want. So I could, in principle, go back in time and kill my grandfather. So if that happened, I wouldn't exist. But worse than that, there would be a contradiction in the nature of the physical world. I will have killed my grandfather, but at the same time there's a fact which says I don't exist, so I didn't kill my grandfather. It is the worst possible thing that can happen in good, careful thinking. You have a contradiction that says both P and not P. Is there any way around this argument? Might time travel be possible anyway? Uh, it turns out the answer is yes. There are some constraints you can impose which do allow for a certain kind of time travel to happen. 
The constraint is a normal thing. Uh, there's a fact about a Rubik's Cube, a simple fact, that certain configurations are not possible. So they say when you first get a Rubik's Cube, you have to make sure you break it apart into pieces and then put it back together solved first. Because if somebody put it back together unsolved, it might be possible that it's, there is actually no way to solve that Rubik's Cube. So that's a global constraint on the nature of the cube. It's not that you, you're being restricted from doing anything, but there are just certain global facts about configurations that can't be reached in the Rubik's Cube. So what if the universe was like that? What if my attempt to kill my grandfather were constrained in a similar way as this Rubik's Cube? So I go back, I try to kill my grandfather, you know, however I do it, I, I get poison or a gun or whatever, and at the moment I'm about to try and kill my grandfather, I slip and fall and miss. Or he decides not to take his normal route home that day and so I don't, I don't even encounter him. Something happens so that I don't kill him. Then there's no cons inconsistency. And you might think this is a, a, an easy way out, but really there are, it opens up a lot of interesting descriptions. I mean, notice there are many time travel descriptions which are not incoherent, but which still have strange effects. And I'll just tell you one. Uh, imagine that I've got uh, a beautiful painting. It's a painting of a, of a rose, and I received it from my grandfather. Uh, I later uh, decide I'd like to learn how to paint, and I, I, I wish to copy this painting, and so I perfectly copy this painting of a rose. And then I build a time machine, and take my painting of the rose, and I go back in time, and I show it to my grandfather as a young man when he was learning how to paint. And I say, you need a model, don't you? You need something to paint. Why don't you have a look at this painting of a rose and try and copy it? And so my grandfather gives it a try, and what he, well, he perfectly copies it down. Goes on in his life, passes the painting down to me, and then I copy it. This is a strange interaction. I've gone back and had some interaction with my grandfather, even changed his behavior. He wouldn't have painted the rose if I hadn't given him the painting. Uh, it's perfectly consistent, but notice it has all these very strange properties. You might ask, where did the image of this rose come from? You know, what rose is it? <laughs> uh, and there needn't be any answer to that in a time travel universe. It's a universe that is different than ours. It's consistent with the laws of physics, but many of our folk intuitions about the nature of cause and effect might fail.